Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Today was a special day. I went out to day two of the National Professional Fishing League, the league as they like to say it, here on the Harris chain. And it was, it was pretty special. So what you're gonna see is a lot of interviews that I did during the morning, drone shots, and then interviews after the anglers had their day on the water. There's people like Keith Carson, and Rob Turkula and Al McCullough, who's one of the owners of the MPFL, and lots of other people that were new to me and probably new to you. So you're gonna see something a little bit different. I mean, I've done lots of interviews with guys from the Bass Elites and the Classic and covered, I've done all this stuff for years, for 10, 12 years I've done this stuff. And today was probably one of my favorite days I've ever done this. And there's a lot of reasons why, I mean, what MPFL, what the MPFL is doing is they're well, they're really running on a skeleton group of guys that are all the guys are doing two, three, four, five, ten things, and the anglers, while not well known, really respected what I was doing and what the media can do to help them. So this is going to be, like I said, a lot of interviews, and I just got to say thank you to the MPFL because they they open they just opened their arms and showed out and allowed me unprecedented access to all the stuff that they have going on. They didn't complain when I was holding up the, the anglers. Uh, they just, they just treated me like family. And the one thing I realized while I was doing this today and got to see old friends like fat cat Newton and, uh, Keith Carson and, and I didn't see Jeff Fritz, but I saw, saw Scott Siller and Kevin Rogers and a bunch of people is that um, what these guys are doing with the NPFL is really special. So I hope you go there, check this, I hope you watch the whole video, but more importantly, I hope you go check out what NPFL is doing. It's really pretty special. Um, like I said, I they really did, I felt, I felt loved. I felt like I was part of the family and I really like that. So go check out NPFL and check out the anglers and give these guys a like and see what they're doing because they're doing something special. They're doing something right too. And there's something to be said about that. You know, uh, I got to, I talked, I didn't film it, but I, I spent probably 30 minutes just talking to Luke Duncan and how excited he was and Fat Cat Newton, Bernard, how excited he was for what was going on with this new league. And um, it, it really was something special. So check it out. I hope you like this. Sorry it's such a long intro, but I've done three of them. And I thought this would, this would be the way to start this off. So let's get it. Here's our boy, Scott Siller. How are you, man? Doing good. Doing good. How has been? Uh, how's the first? This is stop three for you. How's it been for you? What is your your thoughts after we saw each other? I don't. Mean, how long has it been? Five or six months? Yeah. Yeah. You enjoying the league? I, I'm loving the MPFL. I uh, love the format, and yeah, things are good. I'm glad that I've been here in Florida for the last four months to try to understand these fish a little better and. <laughs> Uh, hopefully it'll pay off. So what is, how was like yesterday for day one for you out here? Uh, day one, it wasn't as good as I was hoping. Now I had a solid weight, yeah. but, but I didn't catch very many fish. I ended up calling, calling twice. I called uh, 10 ounces the first fish and then the second one got me another five ounces. But, um, but I got lucky and got a five, 14 I think it was. It saw just under six pounder, yeah. um, but without that, you know, I'd be way down. I think I'm in 40th now, so I got a little work to do, but if I can get another 12 and a half, 13 pounds, I'll be solid. What is, are you gonna change anything up from yesterday to today, other than maybe spots? Well, I'm gonna start in an area I couldn't start in yesterday because there was boats. I'm a higher boat draw today, so mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna start there. I feel like I can pull in there and get a limit in, you know, 15, 20 minutes, and uh, 
and then I'm just gonna, you know, go hunt and peck and bigger fish. Here's a question I've never remotely ever asked anybody. Last week another league was here. Now y'all are here. Is that hurting the fishing gear out on Harris Chain? Well, I don't think I don't think between those two things, but our official practice started Sunday. They had a big tournament out here on Sunday and another one on Monday. Did they? So you combine all of that, I do think it's, um, because I was here right before the cutoff and the fishing was fantastic. Yeah. You know, pretty much everywhere. It's definitely not like that now. But it's a big lake, you know, you got, you know, three pretty good sized lakes, you got grip and there's a lot of room to move around. Yeah. And uh, so you just can't go to the typical honey holes, I feel like. Second place yep, right second now. Place. We interviewed this man, how long ago was it? Uh, I believe it was before the first tournament, so it was February. Maybe. The other John Cox. The other John Cox. How are you doing, sir? Uh, I guess I'm living up to the name on the Harris chain. He's a hammer well, down just here. Just out of curiosity, <laughs> what are the odds that John That's Cox, this is crazy. his, this is his yeah. lake. And I'm beating his buddy, Keith Carson. <laughs> exactly. We're, I don't even know where just, Keith is. Just for today. He's in the top 10 also, but he obviously uh, has knowledge on this lake. So. His chances of repeating his bag from yesterday are way better than mine. What but, did you uh, yesterday that, I mean, how was your practice first off? Uh, the practice was good. Luckily for us guys, we were fortunate enough to have the BPT pretty much practiced for us. So all you had to do was pay attention. Did you want pay attention? Oh, I paid attention to every single minute. So yes. I, I'd like to thank Otto Defoe and Andy <laughs> Montgomery and Brent Chapman. Oh yeah. You know, for showing us what, what the bite was, which is and, my and favorite height. way to fish. As far as a swim jig, chatterbait yes. deal, moving bait, so I, I'm, I'm not much of a flipper, never have been. And, and once they showed us that we could do that, yeah. I pretty much found their area Yep. and then rode. I spent three days in practice just covering water, just not even fishing, uh, just riding around covering every inch of every lake, just riding the shoreline. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't know how many miles that was, but I covered eight lakes in two days of practice. And then on the You're third, ass. yeah, on the third day of practice, I just uh, shook them off. Yeah, uh, on on the stuff that they were doing, you know, two weeks ago. So do and, you, uh, do you do you like? Do you, are you confident that you can repeat what you did yesterday? Really not, because the last day of practice, uh, my wife was fishing with me, and and we had high thirties on the shake off. Yeah, uh, as far as number of fish. Yeah, and, and we were shaking them off. We didn't catch any. And yesterday, I only caught ten. So oh. in that area. Yeah. Now I did not touch. I marked a lot of stuff in a couple of other lakes yeah. that looked like it. Yeah. And I, I, I hope I can go duplicate it if I have to. Obviously I'm gonna start with what got me there. Yeah. Because we already saw that on live coverage two weeks ago that it held a lot of fish. But the wind changed direction on us. So where the wind was blowing in, you had a light, slight breeze into that bank. Yesterday it was slick calm on that end of the lake. Is today with the weather going to be a little more overcast, a little more wind? Is that going to help your fishing or is it going to hurt it's your fishing? It's going to help my 50-year-old body because yeah. <laughs> it was hot yeah, yesterday. It's going to be hot as hell today. Oh, yeah, I know. But, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it was, it's murder down here. This humidity. I don't oh, know yeah. how y'all still live here. Yeah, it's, it's hell. <laughs> is, there, is there something you're – are you are you just strictly chatterbait fishing or are uh, you doing something else? It's, I don't remember if it was Brent Chapman or Octafo, but the the key for me is multiple presentations in the same spot. Yeah. If you think there's a fish there, you better hit it 20 times. Yes. Uh, and I, I mean, several occasions where I threw a chatterbait 10 times and then picked up a swim jig and it was one time to swim jig. And vice versa, I throw the swim jig 10 times and then change up to a chatterbait and it was that different profile or different uh, movement was yeah. what triggered a lot of my bites, I believe. Al McCullough, how are you? I'm well. Um, what are your first thoughts of our wonderful Harris Chain of Lakes? Number one, it's Florida. Who yeah. doesn't want to be in Florida? I don't care. Are if you it's... sweating your balls off yet? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it, it's swamp, blank, blank, blank. <laughs> yes. And, uh, let's see, we get up and get down here about 4.30. By about 4.37, it's swamp, blank, blank, blank. Yes. But yeah, we're great. it's great to be down here in Florida. It's a beautiful facility here in Leesburg at Ski Beach. Um, 
it sets up well logistically for us for the drive through way. And I mean, this point, the main channel out there, Harris Channel Lake, so we couldn't be more happy. Is this one of the places you were looking forward to coming other than oh, the heat? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, and put it this way, the heat, we've got winter and all that stuff up in St. Louis. It's nice to get out here, sweat a little bit, get some exercise. So as far as the heat goes, I will tell you, the bugs are vicious down here. Yes. Talked to a buddy of mine, him and his wife just moved down here from Lake of the Ozarks. He goes, man, everything down here wants to bite, yep. sting, or eat you, and he's right. Yes third stop of the NPFL can yep. we just say the league from here on out absolutely the league. the league absolutely what I mean this was a humongous undertaking that took when did you and I talk first 16 18 months ago yeah so uh, we made the announcement in October of 2019 actually on Halloween yes when we released it to wire to fish and Jason Seelock and then you and I probably talked um, I want to say middle of November end of November so you're looking at uh, where we're at right now you're almost looking at 20 months um planning this thing out and then launching off at uh, you follow for our inaugural event so how how many how hard is it to do something like this well i mean it's extremely difficult um there's a lot of logistics that go into it production we're very limited as far as manpower goes there's four of us there's myself brad fuller michelle fuller and paul benson then we've got a great skeleton crew that we bring on site at each event. Um, you know, we're all doing three or four jobs. Uh, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes, you know, pre-meetings, post-meetings, et cetera, et cetera. But um, very thankful anglers in action. I cut my teeth with them about 14 years ago in the Big Bass Bash. You learn how to do that kind of on a AAA, a baseball level. Here's it's just a step up, a little bit logistically different. Everything's just a little bit bigger, but you understand the checklist that you've got to go through in order to promote put on and post uh promote a tournament yeah this is so i'm going to keep it real with you uh, this Absolutely. is my first time being in here sure there is a lot more production that you guys are not talking about there's like people full on like serious cameras not like my little shitty camera full on cameras that dslr i'm sure costs you a pretty penny but yeah the cameras that we have here I mean, if you go to a sporting event, whether it's an NFL game or a Major League Baseball or an NHL game, we're utilizing the same cameras on the water. We've got 11 of them there. Yeah. When it comes to weigh-in, we've got two cameras there, a non-static and a static camera, one that's up on stage there and one that's our tower camera. Our production facility, which Brad will take you over to check out, you're going to be like, uh, you know what, I knew that this was big, but I didn't know it was that big. So we've got the guys at The Fix up in Appleton, Wisconsin. Brian Keller's the owner, Kyle Carpenter. Uh, and his entire crew, they do a phenomenal job. Uh, this was an undertaking that they couldn't wait to take on. And uh, if you look at as far as our production goes with our studio talent, uh, Luke Duncan and we've got Bradley Hallman filling in for uh, Double D this week. Yep. David Dudley, he's over there at a business meeting up in Tennessee. <laughs> um, and then you got Fat Cat out on the water. Yeah. That trio there, uh, just the entertainment factor, plus the fact that we are doing six hours on Thursday, six hours on Friday, and five hours on Saturday. You're looking at 17 hours of coverage. Um, that gives the angler uh, as much exposure as possible, plus the fans. You know, it's like March Madness when we put on a tournament. People are at work, you know, they're doing their emails, but they also got you know, the, the league other. and the National Pro Fishing League up on the screen there. On the checking other screen. Out the, absolutely. I, so I'm the same way. That's always nice to have that. And then, you know, our weigh-ins are uh, very unique to the league. We do a drive-in weigh-in. We yes. want to be able to expose the sponsorships for those anglers from bumper to prop. So they pull up to that beautiful stage right over there. They get up on stage, exposure for their sponsors who are paying their bills. Uh, this is kind of like baseball in the 20s. You go out and fish, but you also got a job after that, and you've got some people that support you. Yeah. It's not like any of the major uh, sports organizations today. But the drive-in weigh-in is really unique. A lot of folks thought that this was kind of going to be the demise for us. Uh, we did a lot of research into it. Um, man, this thing's going to last four or five hours. We average on Thursday and on Friday, as far as the drive up goes, about two hours. On Saturday, showdown Saturday, we average about two hours and 45 minutes because we give all the anglers an opportunity to talk about the event, to talk about their sponsors, and to talk about their families. Which is wonderful. Absolutely. absolutely. Wonderful. One of the things you guys do that I like the best, well, there's a lot of things you guys are doing right now. I was brutally honest with the first one. Sure. Loved the second one. Loving the third one. I didn't get to watch too much yesterday because I had iCast opera things I had to do. Absolutely. But it seems like you're getting better and better at, at every stop. Is there? Are, are you guys still trying to make sure you go back and say, look, here's some negatives, here's some positive, be pessimistically optimistic, if that makes any sense? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I don't want to know what we did good. 
I want to know what we did bad so we can adjust. If we just sit there and people just tell us you did great, 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 well then things aren't going to get better. The biggest obstacle or variant or variable that came into play here is the mobile studio. Having Luke, having David Dudley, having Bradley Hallman here on site to do the studio. We thought that that was uh, a huge part of the success of this. If we put the studio back up in Appleton, all of these technical things that we talked about on that first day at Eufaula, which wasn't a disaster, but I would say was probably at about 70% functionality. We got to Friday, we got to Saturday, and we tuned it in big time. We went to Texarkana and hit a home run, mm -hmm. and right now we're hitting a home run here at uh, Harris Lake of uh, Harris Chain of Lakes. But there's a lot of variables that go into production. You're talking about cell service. You're talking about we had a big storm roll in there yesterday, messed up a lot of things. Yeah. We had to cut off for about 15 minutes. We got through. We still got through in two hours and 30 minutes yesterday with everything and all the variables and all that stuff. But yeah. You run a lot of risks, but if you don't take any chances as far as production goes, you know, we want to take it to the next level. That's why we put 11 cameras out on the water. River Lee, National Professional Fishing League, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, man. Good, uh, pretty good day today, huh? Yeah, not too bad. I had I had 19, 12 yesterday, and I think I got around 17 today, so staying pretty consistent. Uh, my, my bags, my quality of my bags better today. I just never had that five, six, seven pound bite to push me over 20 pounds. I have a, I mean, my smallest fish is about three pounds. My biggest fish is three and a half. They're just all the same size. And typically, that's not a normal four to bat. Usually you got a giant and then some small ones that go with it. So, but if I can get that big bite tomorrow, we might make a run at this thing. Uh, where are you from, out of curiosity? I'm from Nacogdoches, Texas. Oh, okay. Where you have some big fish. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, where are you, because this won't post tonight, are you fishing grass? What are you fishing? What's the, uh, the beta choice? I'm fishing uh, Kissimmee grass. Make sure nobody's around. Yeah, I'm fishing Kissimmee grass, the edge of it, but it's got to be deeper. It can't be five foot. It's got to be like in that six, seven, eight foot range. Yeah. And uh, they're just, man, I feel like they're coming to me because I feel like a lot of fish are still shallow. There's not a whole lot of offshore grass for them to get on, mm -hmm. at least in Harris. Yeah. And they're just pulling to the edges of the Kissimmee grass. And I caught more fish today than I did yesterday. So, but that's all I'm doing. And in the mornings, I'm fishing behind docks around cypress trees and walkways and stuff like that. Because my flipping bite typically don't get good until the sun comes up. So is it a, a certain a certain bait that's working when you're flipping? Are you flipping worm? Are you, is it wacky rigged or what are you, how are you fishing? Uh, I'm flipping a, uh, with a three quarter ounce weight, flipping a stick bait, some uh, Senko type bait. Yeah. Uh, I'm flipping a heavier weight than normal because I just had it tied on from when I came from Rayburn and I said, I got heck with it, I'll just flip it. And, and it is deeper. And I think they like that faster fall with that three quarter ounce weight. So that's what I've been flipping, 65 pound braid, big rod, fast reel. That's what I've been doing. So what is it gonna take tomorrow? Man, I don't know. I gotta see some weights today, but uh, I still think somebody's gonna have to win. You're gonna be at the round 57 to 60 pounds probably. I, uh, that would mean 20 tomorrow then. I'd have to catch 20, but it's doable. It is doable. Yes, sir. Is there gonna? Are you fishing? Are you fishing any pads or anything like that? Or I mean, are you? You're, you said you're fishing docks in the morning, mm -hmm. and then you're getting the grass. You're not fishing any pads or nothing like that, looking for bluegill or anything like that. No, sir. Uh, there is a bunch of bluegill and a little tilapia around the Kissimmee grass. I didn't. I didn't do much of the pads or in practice and stuff. But um, yeah, I'm fish more or less fishing the Kissimmee grass. There's bluegill around and a little bit of shad and some uh, so a little tilapia and stuff like that and needlefish. So the bait's there. Well, I know Fat Cat. You're, you're, he's talking about you. You're yeah. his boy. <laughs> so good luck tomorrow. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Is there, uh, uh, what's your social media stuff? Uh, my social media on Instagram is RJ Lee Fishing, I believe. And then on Facebook, it's just River Lee. Uh, and I don't have a Twitter yet. I probably should get one. But, yeah. uh, yeah. but those, those are my social media. Jordan Nettles, right? Yes, sir. NPFL, yes, how sir. are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Thank you for the time, first off. Tell me a little bit about yourself. How'd you get introduced into the outdoors? Uh, I was raised in the outdoors, started fishing and hunting whenever I was probably four or five years old, my dad. Uh, whenever I was little, my dad fished uh, the bass invitationals. And okay. Kind of got into fishing that way and I've uh, been hunting my whole life and fishing and took a long break for college and a career. And then finally, whenever I made a career change and became self-employed, I started fishing tournaments again and for the past three years I've been doing it not full-time but whenever I get the time and yeah. the schedules work out so good first day or your top 20 in the first day yes sir how was today today was a little bit difficult uh, my offshore stuff could not get the fish to fire 
scrapped that after lunch and finally went up shallow and started flipping and probably caught 20 fish in the last hour and a half. Oh, nice. Was the goal when you st when you started practicing to do to fish offshore, or was my it... goal was to fish a lot of offshore stuff? And I probably have sixty spots that I marked, and only four have been productive. I ran those four this morning, and um, just never could get them to bite. I caught one keeper the first cast whenever I pulled up, and um, it just that fish. I ended up culling later on in the day, so okay. I did. I did have one. Yeah. Didn't think about that, and then. I ended up culling him. He was probably 12 and a half inches and ended up getting a bunch of two pounders to finish the day in the last hour and a half. What do you think of, are you, have you ever been, where are you from first off? Mississippi. Okay, so have you ever been down here fishing? No, this is my first time. This is your first time. What, first time. what is the, the thought process? I mean, we're shallow fishing. Well, in Mississippi, all the lakes are shallow. They are. They're all shallow. Okay. I have a, a campground in Mississippi that has a 650 acre lake and the average depth is five foot. Okay. And then Ross Barnett, you know, that's one of the big tournament uh, lakes that we have back home. And it's a shallow lake and a river system. Um, but it's mainly power shallow fishing. So it's a lot of grass fishing, a lot of lily pads, things like that. Yeah. So this, I'm pretty comfortable with going shallow. Okay. Um, but I really like fishing offshore. You do? Yeah. When you're offshore, I mean, can I ask what you were using? Crankbaits. Okay. Crankbaits and Carolina rigs. So, like, were you fishing in, like, the 6 to 8 foot deep, or were you fishing deeper? 17. Okay, so you're fishing deep water. Deep water. Like, that's deep water for yeah. us. Yeah, and, and I, was, I caught uh, five fish whenever I pulled up to it yesterday and yeah. about 10 cast. Okay. And I had 13, 14 pounds, and I went flipping the rest of the day. Finding grass out there, is that what the goal is? Or uh, you got hard finding structure? Oh, yeah, you're finding the, the hard shell spots. beds. Yep. Yeah. So what is it going to take tomorrow? You, you, How much do you think you have right now with you? Mm, maybe 10, a little over 10. I think you had a couple three there. Mm, it'll be close. I think you I had one, two, one or two threes. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now. Uh, and, and yesterday, I should have had a 24, 25 pound bag. Really? I tried getting a eight, nine pounder in the boat, had her right here. Whenever I grabbed her, the hook came out and I tried <sighs> squeezing her up against the boat. Yeah. I grabbed her with this hand and she just slid right out. So and she was big. I actually broke my rod on her. Really? On the hook set, yeah. So, so, you, so you're saying there's a chance, as they say in Dumb and Dumber. So you're oh, saying there's a chance. Absolutely. What is it going to take I, tomorrow? I wasted way too much time uh, doing what I did this morning, and I think tomorrow I'm just going to start off flipping, and I'm just going to flip all day long. Yeah. Because I lost several nice fish this evening, but that's just part of it. Whenever you're flipping way back in the stuff. So. Do you think with all the tournaments that have been on this this chain of lakes the last couple weeks is that hurting the fishing or helping the fishing absolutely fish? it's not hurting the fishing i don't think there's a very healthy population of yeah. fish here this is and great. everybody that fishes these tournaments know how to take care of fish as well yeah yeah that's cool okay tell me your social media or any Jordan sponsors Metals fishing um willow oak lodge in alabama okay timmy horton's lodge oh yeah I know um, Tim. he does uh turkey hunts, whitetail hunts. He also does pheasant hunts or quail hunts as well. Um, beautiful place. Uh, profound Outdoors and FX Custom Rods. And nice. of course, Little Black Creek Campground and Park. Awesome. Thank you for the time. Good luck tomorrow, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Dale Pinkley? Prinky. Prinkley. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're good. How are you today? All right. How about you? Uh, very good. Uh, pretty darn good day I saw today. Yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, would have liked another stud, but it, it, I mean, I can't complain. That's what do you think good. you're bringing in today? Um, I, I'm going to say 17-ish. Still so, good. Going to yeah. keep you up there. Yes. What, what's the, the secret out here? Have you, are you First off, let me ask, who, who introduced you to the outdoors? Uh, my dad. Your dad did? Yes. And he's, you know, he's a walleye guy though, so. Okay. So I got into the walleye fishing and then it's like off onto my own, my own thing. What do so, you think of our Florida fishery? It is awesome. I'll definitely come back. Is this your first time fishing yes. down here in a tournament? Yes. Look at you and you're finding the hogs. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, I mean, it's not, I, I don't know, I, was, I guess some people are struggling, but I don't, it's, it, you're just fishing. I mean. That's what I told myself I was going to do. Practice wasn't that great. I had the biggest two fish I caught were maybe four pounds. Yeah. Um, and it's shown out for tournament, at least. What's the secret lure you're using, can you say? A uh, homemade swim jig. Really? Yep. 
can I take a picture of it in the back? Is uh, that one of the rods? Yeah, it's tied. Is it? Yep. I won't post this tonight, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, What's I ain't the... worried about anybody else having one. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, you make this one yourself? Yeah, I made them. How long does it take to make? I don't know. I make uh, quite a few of them at one time, so it's not... It doesn't take really that long. You got to melt lead and then paint them and get a whole bunch of them done in a day. Is there a certain color you're using that's working better than others? White. White? Mm, white, white, white head. Yep. It's actually a glow in the dark white. Oh, nice. And then a white chartreuse skirt. Excellent. Well, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. I'll be here tomorrow, so hopefully I, I see a win. Uh, social media stuff, where can people find you? Uh, I'm on Facebook. Uh, I do have Instagram. I got to get do a little bit more with Instagram. But, yeah. yes, Facebook and Instagram, uh, Dale Prinky. So we nice. got to get a fishing page made up, and then I'll be on Dale Prinky Fishing nice. on Facebook. But we're getting there. Congratulations. Thank Good you. job today. Thank you. Brian Smith. Yes. How are you? I'm doing great. Nice to meet you, by the way. Absolutely. Tell me, first, tell me a little bit about yourself. How'd you get introduced to the outdoors? Uh, I started with my parents. They always took me out there. You nice. Know, same story. And uh, actually, I saw a guy catch a bass on uh, on the dock I was fishing for trout on at one of my local lakes. And I was like, that is cool. I like how he used a lure instead of, you know, just some stink bait. Yeah, live bait or something. I was like, that was cool. I want to I want to know about that. And, you know, the rest is history. Where are you from? California. Oh, <laughs> nice drive. <laughs> nice drive, dude. Yeah. So what do you think of, uh, is this the first time you ever fished Florida? It is, it is. I'm and very, look at you, you're in the top 20. I'm trying. <laughs> Dude, that's impressive. I appreciate it. Now what's working? What 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 are you doing? Uh, flipping and throwing a square bill for the most part. Okay. You know, just covering some water with the, the square bill in the morning and then just slowing down with a flipping stick at the end of the day. Is there any color or certain brand that's working better than others? Uh, just some chartreuse shad colors on the okay. crankbaits and then uh, a black and blue stick bait on the flipping with a half ounce weight, yep. 50 pound braid, just right on the edge of the Kissimmee grass. Yeah, it's, it's about grass down here. Oh, every bit of it, I love it, I well, love it. Are you enjoying fishing down here? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I like. I come from Clear Lake in California Delta and that's what we do is fish grass, so yeah. it's awesome. Isn't it a lot deeper? I mean, how big of a change is it fishing out there compared to fishing here? Honestly, this place reminds me almost spot on of the north end of Clear Lake, California. Really? Yeah, the grass is a little bit different, but yeah. yeah, for the most part, exactly the same. What is it gonna take tomorrow to win? I have no idea. There's way too many big fish swimming around. Are you seeing big fish? No, but I know they're here. Yeah. You know, you hear the stories and everything, so. Yes, yeah, but we're all fishermen. Exactly. You know what happens with stories. They get bigger and bigger every time. I like this guy. I like this guy. So you, you you just need to go out and just do what you do and yep. hopefully run into a couple big ones tomorrow. That's the plan. Okay, social media stuff. What is it? Uh, Bryant Smith Fishing on Instagram, and I have a Facebook page that's the same thing, Bryant Smith Fishing. Excellent. We have to do an interview live one time and, and talk again and talk. I would love to just talk California fishing, to be honest. I'd love to do it. Especially because I, I got a feeling you might be heading west next hopefully, year. Hopefully, hopefully. That would be killer. I would, I'd, I'd take a shorter drive. Yeah. <laughs> How long did it take you to get here? I flew. Oh, you flew? Yeah. yeah. We've oh, been yeah. making our way over there. Yeah. I think it's about time we weigh okay, in. Okay, sorry. We're ready to nice go. Nice to meet you. Absolutely. Thank you. Mike Como, Steve Chapman, Fish and Florida Radio. Get your fish on. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Are you going to bring these babies out? Can we? Sure. Can we talk? Oh! There we go. What was the winning bait? What's the, the bait of choice to this week? Uh, Chatterbait, mostly, and a, and a uh, uh, Big Bites salty stick. Now, I've been told you got a stud in there. Well, I don't know if they're studs, but they're all. They're, oh, they're that's a beautiful. Good. That's a beautiful one, dude. Now, in all honesty, how much does that one weigh? We're guesstimate. Uh, probably four, something, four. Is this your first time being down here in Florida fishing? No. Oh, that's another nice one. You've been, you fished out here before? Yes, sir. Now it is is it, this is first you, time I've ever fished Harris in the Street? lake that I'm that I'm fishing in. Though. Okay. And and you're enjoying it, obviously. Oh yeah. oh yeah, another stud. Look at that's a beautiful fish there, man. Sure is. Pretty color, right? How many fish did you catch today? Uh, probably ten. Okay. All on chatterbait and a and a uh, 
big salty stick bait from, from, from Big Bites. Nice, that's another nice one, dude. Yeah, just a good solid bag. Yeah, no, like, good solid bag. No, where, like, no giants, but. Where were you standing after day one? Uh, 40th. Around. So this is really going to put you up there. Yes, sir. Because I think I got probably close to 20. Can you go back to the same spot tomorrow and, and catch the same fish? Yes, sir. I would have caught those on the first day, but there was two locals sitting right on my spot. Hey, don't hurt us locals. Day, that, so. Us locals got to have fish, no, too. No, I didn't say nothing oh, no, to joking. them. I let them fish. Shots. But today, the rain kept them off the water. Okay. And the cloud cover helped my chatter bite bait. Okay. You know, the bite better. Well, I know we have to go. Yeah. Social media stuff, tell me real fast. Uh, um, Where can they find you? I have a Facebook page, uh, Mike Col Como. Okay, good okay. luck. Thank, Thank you. you for the time, sorry. Thank you, no, no problem. Thanks, Dave. Later, dude. Mark Schilling, how, keep going. How are you? I'm doing good, man. How was the, how was day two? Now she drives fast. Man, she hauled. <laughs> she had it in like man, first gear a second day ago. Day two was, uh, was tough for me. It, I, I probably caught 20, 25 fish. They just were all were small all day long. That happens. I had one. I had one big bite today that that I just couldn't turn, and it got in the grass and yep. came off. But you know, I wasn't on what I was on yesterday. Yesterday I could have had a really big bag, and today just same spots. Do you go back tomorrow to fish the same spots? No, I'm just gonna go fishing tomorrow. You're just gonna have fun. Sleep yeah, for the and, and this 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 is almost identical to what happened to me when we fished at. Uh, at uh, Wright Patman. Yeah. And day two, I was up there in third place, and day two, I just had a terrible day. And day three, I just went fishing, and I got right back in the top ten. So. When you have when you have a bad day, like you just said, do you start fishing faster in, during the day, or do you do you say to yourself, I need to slow down, and or do you pick up things no, apart? I, I mean, I knew what I was gonna do. I mean, I'm flipping the Kissimmee grass, and, yeah, and I just I just pick it apart. I didn't change my game plan. I didn't do anything different than yesterday. The weather changed, and I think it hurt me. Um, but I just kept doing the same thing. Now, I will say you feel the stress. When, yeah. when you look down at that clock and there's an hour left, and you're like, yeah. man, I don't have a good bag at all. Yeah, you feel it a little bit, but. So it's it's been a worm, that's been the key for you this week? I've, been, th I've been throwing a brush hog all week. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. you see the bottom of my floor. Yeah, you've got them all over. Yeah, I mean, I went through two bags today. Nice. Okay, so, so social media stuff, since you're driving off. Say it. It'll catch it. Oh, social media yeah, stuff? Yeah, what's your social media stuff? Uh, Where Mark, can people find you? MarkSchillingFishing.com. And, and I'm I'll, sure. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> All right, sounds great. Thank I'll you. Have nice to meet you. Nice. Welcome to TV, Rob Turkle. How are you? I'm good, buddy. I'm nice good. to meet you this morning, by the way. I know you were like, who the f is this guy? <laughs> but that's all right. I was just going a million miles a minute. How was the day today? It was mediocre. It was kind of Florida-ish on me, to be honest with you. You have had a lot. This year, you have went to another level of doing something that a lot of people think are crazy. What's that, tournament fishing? Tournament fishing. Yeah, it is. It's hard. It, it is, is hard. It is real hard. It's hard to say consistent, to tell you that much. But you... But you seem to have found your niche down here, if I'm going to be honest. Florida? You seem to have found something that is, you You said it in the last video, I think you were in Texas, so you said grass is key, and I thought to myself, yeah. this this dude's going to do well here. I, I thought I was going to do pretty well. I I missed two, two big bites today that really jack you up, because then you get stuck with these. I'm going to walk with you. All right. That's it. That's what I got. That's all I got. Tennis or so today. How, how tough is making that transition? In all honesty, uh, it, going from YouTube to tournaments is very tough. Yeah, because it's a different mindset. I usually just care about making videos. Now I care about catching five big fish. Yeah, <laughs> which is and you, and you got to use different baits and you everything. Have time and there's so much that goes into it. Do so you, much more. Do you enjoy it? In oh, all I honesty, I enjoy it way more. Do you? Yeah, yeah, it's way more fun. It's stressful though. Do you start? Yeah. Do you start going? I need, you know, I have X amount, and I need. I know I want to make a check. Do you start? Does it make you start fishing faster? Uh, it makes me contemplating the decisions I made. Does it? Yeah. Like today, I was like, man, I probably should have sat offshore a little longer because I had one big bite, and then I, if I would have had that big bite, I'd be solid for tomorrow. Number, uh, 65. Okay, we'll have to talk Boat another time. 65. But, 65. but I appreciate it. Yeah, there, boy, right there. <laughs> 
Keith Carson, how are you? I'm doing all right. Hanging pretty good. Uh, pretty good start. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday uh, came in with uh, 18, 14. Yeah. So ounce shy, of 19 pounds. Uh, had some big ones waking the bait. I'm shallow. I'm fishing around lily pads, duckweed. I'm moving fast, throwing fast moving baits. Uh, did the same thing today. Had an equally amount of large wakes chasing me down. Um, and what do you do? just out of curiosity? Yeah. You see that wake following you? Do you yeah. just, do you stop and go? I'm gonna let this thing swallow it, or do you keep moving it? So it depends. Like it depends on how far I am from the fish. Okay. If it's a long cast, I might I'll try to keep moving it because okay. typically, if you can keep that bait moving, he'll chase it down and really hit it. Yeah. Uh, but if it's you know if it's something close where I'm you know within 40 feet or so. I'll, I'll have to pause it okay. and hopefully sometimes they'll follow it down and then you can you know try to twitch it uh, there's sometimes you can kill it and they'll eat it right away and yeah. you'll see your line taken off if not then I'll try to twitch it and get them to bite it usually by that point your percentage of getting a hookup is really low uh. but every now and then you do you know every now and then you get one still so um, or or there's another option you can reel it in real fast and hope he goes back to the structure right. and then cast and try to get him to react uh, you know from the structure where he's sitting when when this this tournament started do you think you'd be catching him on uh you know on mm -mm. top ish water I not don't say no exactly. actually uh my practice um i spent all my practice fishing outside edge of kissimmee grass of course i had believe it or not i had one shell bar Really? Yeah, and I might try it tomorrow. I look. I got a Carolina rigged up. I don't know where it's at, <laughs> but I have a Carolina rigged up. Um, I've got a deep spot, uh, but besides that, it was outside edge of Kissimmee grass and ducks, yeah. and that was my game plan. And then, um, so I started day one, and it just wasn't happening. It was too windy. It, the Kissimmee grass was too windy. There was big waves rolling into all of my stretches, and. Um, and then the docks weren't happening, so I just I just went and fished canals. Does having too much knowledge on this lake hurt you? De absolutely, yeah. Yeah, even throughout practice, like sometimes I'd pull up onto a small stretch, typically where the bites come from on like a Kissimmee grass stretch, and I would flip through 50 or 100 yards and, that, and in my mind I'm like, let's go. And after I did that a few times, well, and I left, and then, but after I did that a few times in my mind I was like, I need to just fish. I need to just fish. Like when I do really well, Wright Patman, Lay Lake, times I've smashed them, it's when I get in an area and I learn everything. And I can go down a stretch for hundreds and hundreds of yards and learn where where is every bite gonna come from? What do what kind of cast do I need to make? You know, what baits do I need? Um, and so when I started doing that here, even though I knew the area so well, the practice started started to get better. So, are you going to change anything for tomorrow? Yes. You are? Yes. So I, I, um, I stayed on Harris both days. Today I, I had 14.7. I was fortunate enough to get a, a five pounder around one o'clock. Had I not had that, I'd had nine, ten pounds or so. Um, but actually nine pounds probably. Yeah. Yeah, or whatever. But, um, you know, it's, uh, I think I'm going to go to Beauclair. Really? Yeah, I think I'm going to go there. I, I know specific docks that I can fish. I should be able to catch three pounders off of. Yeah. I've got a dock that I caught a 13 and a half off of. Shut up. Yeah, a year ago. Yeah. Nice. Now that was on an Alabama rig, which is illegal. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But still. I you know, know it's still there. I know it, yeah, I, the big ones live on this dock. So I'm gonna go hit that one and I'm hoping to get at least a four or five off of it. Um, I'm, I'm gonna do like a little milk run you know, honestly, I need to catch 25 if I'm going to win this thing. That's, you know? that's a big bag. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, to be honest, we both know that can happen out here without any problems. Right, right. It can definitely happen. Yeah. Yeah. I, and maybe 30. I mean, hey, who knows? Maybe I'll catch a couple eights, you know, or maybe I won't catch anything at all. So. Yeah, I think you'll, you'll probably catch <laughs> yeah. something. Okay, let's talk briefly. Okay. You leave here, the classic. Yeah. How excited are you about the class? Oh my gosh, yeah, it's a combination of being excited and also nervous. You know, I'm going to Ray Roberts, never been there, don't know anything about it. I'm missing, today was first day of official practice. I know. I'm here on Harris. I'm gonna miss second day of official practice. I'll be on Harris again. I'm gonna leave here tomorrow night, drive overnight 17 hours, try to get there by 1 p.m., hopefully get a few hours of practice in on day three. Then we're off for two media days. Then I'll get a, a one more day. So I'm really only going to get a day, day and a half of practice. 
hopefully I can figure something out. Um, you know, is it like, isn't it this well. like the dream come true as a as a professional angler to get to go to the classic yeah. and that yeah the the fans and the it's the classic. I know, I know. This is like it's you know what to be honest, I'm trying not to get too hyped up about it. Yeah. You know. Cause like I'm gonna be hyped up for you. Yeah, I'm gonna be texting you after day be, one. Be just, hyped just so up. you know. Yeah, be hyped up for me. Cause <laughs> I mean, I I'm inside like I'm so excited, but in my head I'm like, all right, keep focused, stay focused. You know, you know, you, you gotta you gotta execute a game plan to catch you fish. Do. And uh, if I get too wrapped up in everything, you know, I might lose focus of where what I need to be paying attention to. But as a spectator, the classic is the biggest tournament of all time. Hands down. Growing up, it was I wanted to fish it, and and as a kid, I, I knew that one day I wanted to get to the classic. But I always told myself I'll never go to the classic until you're in it. And so this will be my first time attending it, first Seriously? time competing in it. Never been to you the classic. You didn't go when John went three years ago. No, no, I wouldn't go. You yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't go. Dude, that was the only reason yeah. I went and covered it. Because John was there. Because yeah. John was there. I was like, oh, I got my buddy there. I got yeah. That, well, when Rich House joint, uh, made it a couple yeah, years ago, Yeah, that's too, right. Yep. I was like, yeah, this is our local boys. I need to go out. Right. And, and then, of course, you do other crap, but you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, no, no, never went. Uh, so now, now we're both going to be in it. That's awesome. Can't believe it. Hit like and subscribe to your own kids fishing. <laughs>